Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today we are doing a fabric haul. I recently came back, as in two days ago, came back from Malaysia. I was in Kuala Lumpur and I was there for a week. And let me tell you, they have a lot of fabric out there. I knew this going in. I did a little bit of a Google search and saw the hundreds of stores there were. So I brought myself an extra suitcase because I was absolutely going to be coming back with some of that fabric. And yeah, I've got a lot. But if I'm going to be completely honest with you, just before I went, I did have a bit of a making spree. I made a bunch of things so that I could free some space and not feel too bad about buying all these fabrics. But yeah, I'll probably be... Uh, holding off on buying fabrics for a little while until I at least make a dent in all of this. Before you get comfortable and you start watching this video, it is gonna be a fairly long video. I've got a lot of fabrics to go through and I filmed a vlog. So pause me right now, go make that cup of tea, get your snacks. If you're starting a project and you're gonna hear me in the background, just get yourself situated and then we can just dive into this pile of fabric together. So as I said before, I did film a vlog and as normal, it starts off with good intentions and then it kind of just peters off in the end. So please bear with my video. I did the best that I could. Um, and like, I'll just, I'll just see you on the other side. Enjoy the vlog. I'll see you on the other side. We are fabric shopping today in Kuala Lumpur. I don't know the name of the street I'm on. I just got a grab to this first place um, to be here at opening time because we've got lots of fit in today and this store closes quite early. It's called Chaiko. It is a shoe and leather specialist. And I thought I'd hit this place first because they've got a lot of tools and stuff that I've been looking for that I can't get in the UK and I can get here. And I've got loads of luggage, so I've got space and that's where we're gonna go. Okay, so the first place that I went to, turns out that store doesn't exist anymore, which is really upsetting because I was really excited. They did shoe last, they did all sorts of stuff. So I'm at the second place, it's called Malayan. It is a um, another leather place, which is about, it's like a 30 minute walk or an eight minute car ride. So we took a car ride and it's just here beside me. It's like a place that does like leather tools, mostly for bag making but they have like the threads and the edge dies and the cutters and all sorts of stuff there for all sorts of leather making. Really nice place. Let's go inside. Okay, I am out. I just ordered another taxi. We're gonna go and head into the fabric areas now. But I did buy a little something something. Um, because there was no like shoe making stuff, I did just buy a few tools that I will use just for leather making anyway. So I'm very happy with that. So um, let's get on to the next place. So I've just got into my town shopping mall. It is absolutely huge here. The reason why I've come here is on the way to the other fabric places, but there is one fabric store in here, which is a spotlight. They have them in Australia, they have them in Singapore, they have them in Hong Kong. We're gonna go and have a look in spotlight and then we're gonna head over to where all the fabric streets are. And there are streets, I've heard. We'll see for ourselves. This is how you know that this place is humongous. Look how how many places there are and how many floors. So I need to find a spotlight and we can have a quick look and then we'll head out into the fabric streets. I found it. Now, if you do come here and you're wondering where it is in the store, it is right on top of Zara on the second level. So I found it pretty quickly. I'm actually really surprised. Do 
Did you know that Simplicity apparently does sewing machines now? I did not know that. Okay, well. So I think we're like in the cotton section. I mean, this store is really, really big. It's kind of, it feels a little bit like the Ikea of crafting places. I'm in the pattern section, but it goes all the way around. So we're gonna spend a quick amount of time seeing what there is. So I've seen some really nice stuff, but I actually think I'm just gonna get this rib knit fabric. I have a few ribs, but not in these like fun colors. I think I'm gonna pick up this brown rib knit. I actually really like it. And I have a top in mind. It's actually a body and I think it'll be quite nice. So we're gonna pick this up. This green is quite nice, but I need to stop picking up green stuff. I'm like all I've got is green stuff at the moment. So, but yeah, there is a lot, lots of quilt and fabric over there. And we've got some linens. And then we've got the like the little samples of all the things that you can make with them, which is really good. Just got a grab to Jackel Mall. I did a little bit of research online and apparently this entire mall is full of like clothing and fabric stores and it's, there's loads. So I've decided to come here. I only have like two hours before I have an appointment to get my nails done. So we're gonna go here first, get our nails done and then hopefully do some fabric on the other side. If not, I'm here for like four more days. So we're gonna do a second day to see the rest of it. So let's go inside. Okay, so I'm inside Jackal School at the moment. Uh, you're not supposed to film or anything in here. So it's it's really difficult. And I'm being very sneaky right now because no one's looking at me. So I'm having a great time. Just know that the fabric that I'm getting from here is amazing. back at the hotel now after I went to the Jackan um, mall which was humongous by the way I went to go and get my nails done I had a nail appointment that I had to stick to and it took three hours they did a really good job but I didn't have time to go back to do some fabric shopping so back at the hotel hanging out by the pool we are going to do a day two where we have a look at the other areas so I'll see you then Sitting in the lobby again because it is day two we are gonna go back out there go fabric shopping uh, Sam and I went to visit different parts of town this morning it's about three o'clock now and I'm gonna do some more shopping because yesterday being at Jack Elm Mall uh, I, I would have been there all day there's it's like eight floors all full of fabric it's madness it was great I, I got some really nice fabric but uh, we're gonna try and see and find some other places now fabric which is like washable so like probably poly blend um, because basically I want to make some pajamas and I want to make um, some dressing gowns some like lightweight ones I've already made myself a heavyweight one but I think some lighter silkier fabric ones would be nice so I've got some nice printed fabric for that uh, I'm realizing pretty much all of these streets all of these places are fabric places um, but they seem to have quite a bit of um, 
silky fabrics like silk fabrics and also florals um, and also scarves for uh, for like head wraps and like for the hijab so um, that's the most popular thing that you're gonna find here but you know I'm, I'm finding a few things that there was bits of spandex here so, and there so we're still looking and um, yeah I'm just gonna like pop in and out of these places if I find something awesome I will show you and if not we'll head over to the next town Oh god, it's gorgeous. Love it. Yeah, okay. Oh, what was it? This this way around? Yeah, long long ways is nice. Or here you go. Or this colorway, also very nice, a lot wintry. I like this too. And also, final one, this one over here. It's strange, I don't normally go for flowers, but I'm really liking these ones. It's the orange, I think. It's also, oh, I love it. So I've decided on this color. I'm gonna go for this green. We're rocking with the florals now. And these are 20 ringgits a meter which is like three pounds fifty so that's not bad we have loads of different ones it's really nice We've got some dresses in our future so in this store they do mostly clothing but this section here they have cuts of fabric that are four meters per cut and as you can see, they've got like some ones that have got sparkly stones, but they're only, the sparkle stones are only at the front, but there are lots of different styles. And I've picked up one that I like without the stones. And I think that's it for today. It is day three and I'm in another fabric store. So the way I've been planning my days in the morning up until about two, three o'clock, me and Sam are out going to see Malaysia doing stuff. And then he has to go and do some work come UK time. And then um, I'm over here. So uh, we are in Nagoya Textiles today. This wasn't open yesterday because of Diwali, but today is Monday's a bank holiday still, but everything is open. So it's looking very promising. A lot of cottons, uh, viscose, uh, polyesters, crepes. Um, hopefully we can find a few things. Um, I'm in the market for some nice prints to make some like longer dresses for the winter that I can wear boots with and some nice shirts. So that is kind of what we're looking for. We'll see what we find. Okay, we are upstairs. This is floor two. Looks like we've got a lot of plain fabrics, some more cottons and there's laces over there. Some sparkly things over there. Let's see what we find. Ooh, hello. So I've looked around the whole store and the favorite, my favorite is this uh, printed Swiss dot. It's getting a bit cold in the UK. So I'm thinking cute pajamas. I'm thinking cute dressing gown. Also, I think this would make a really nice blouse or a shirt dress and I love a shirt dress and I love a shirt so I think I'm gonna get something like this I'm liking this color I like this color the yellow is cool but I also like this colorway with the flowers again normally don't go for flowers but I don't know maybe it's because I'm here and everyone's obsessed with flowers 
Yeah, quite. Maybe this light one. This one's cool. Oh my gosh, look at that. Oh, I like it. Two. Uh, three. Oh, three. Perfect. Three. Three. Okay. Three. Okay. Three. Amazing. Three. Thank you very much. Oh, I love it. I made a mistake. I left my cards in my other bag, which I was using yesterday. Um, and because I haven't paid for anything yet today, like I completely didn't even notice they weren't here. So I went into Nagoya. Yeah. We got some fabric. It's all cut up and they're ready to pay. I was like, can I pay by card? She's like, great. So I get out my phone to use contactless. And she's like, no, 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 you need the actual card. We don't have contactless here. So I'm getting in a taxi. The hotel's 20 minutes away, 20 minutes there, 20 minutes back so that I can buy this fabric. I don't want them to think I'm just making them cut things and then leaving. But uh, yeah, not every place takes contactless. So like, bring your card to me. Don't, don't be like me, bring the card. Card procured back. Now we're gonna pay. Okay, on to the next place, Bangaruben, which is the haberdashery type thing. I can see threads, I can see all sorts of stuff. Let's see what's inside. A viscose like we are in geo fabrics right now a lot more fabrics I'm in the print section again So as you can see, went to quite a few places. There was one place that I did go to that I didn't film because I discovered it maybe the day before we were leaving. I tried looking for it on the first day, couldn't find it and it kind of went back again and found it. So I did pick up some stuff from there. I will try to show you everything as fast as I can. We're gonna stop waffling, let's go. First place that I went to was a place called Malayan Leather. I didn't actually buy any fabrics there and I didn't buy leather well done me, but I did manage to buy myself a few little tools that I would need in my leather making journey. The first thing I got was a edge paint. It's a leather edge paint that you use to finish edges of leather. And I got it in a color that actually matches like three of the leathers that I have, which would be really good for when I do some boot making and a bag that I'm planning to make. So I got that along with a leather edge paint roller. It's like a little metal tip that you kind of roll to use the paint on it and it makes it have a nice even finish. And then the last thing I got from there was a leather gauge, which is uh, basically a measuring tool that you use to gauge how thick the leather is so you can make sure you're using it for the right thing. The store that I went to, Malayan Leather though, it's very well stocked for such a small little store. And the guy that runs it is also really, really nice. He let me film inside, so I took a few shots. Um, and 
yeah, it was it was busy when I was in there. It was like four or five other people. So it's obviously a very popular shop. From what I could see, there wasn't a ton of leather and leather craft shops in Malaysia. There were maybe like three or four and some of them were really, really far out of town. So I didn't go to them. But if I ever go back again, I will go check it out. So after that, I jumped in another taxi. Just a note, lots of taxis to be jumped into. Kuala Lumpur is not exactly a walkable city. Maybe each town that you're in might be a bit walkable, but for the most part, there's not really a lot of pavements everywhere. It's either driveways going straight into people's houses or you're like on the freeway or you're on the highway. So, um, it's easier to actually get a taxi and the way that the exchange rate works, uh, one ringgit is about 17p, 17 pence or cents in, uh, in UK money. So it's, um, it's pretty cheap and the taxis were working out to about 20 ringgits for like a 30 minute journey, like if I'm going somewhere. So everyone gets grab taxis absolutely everywhere. And I just downloaded the app, put my card on it and just did the same thing. It was very, very easy. Jumped into another taxi and headed in towards the center of KL. On the way there though, there is a humongous shopping mall called My Town. Uh, I think the area is also called My Town. And over there, there is a spotlight fabrics in there. For those of you in Singapore and in Australia, Australia. Spotlight Fabrics, you already know about it. That's where I first discovered and when I went to Australia I was like wow this place is amazing. It is a humongous like craft store, all kinds of like DIY crafty things you can find in there and they have quite a large fabric section. It's kind of like, uh, for those of you in the US, it's like a Michael's or a Joann's, but like with a, a DIY section for like all the hobbies, including like cake making, uh, like paper craft and all sorts of stuff. It's a really cool place and their fabric selections are pretty amazing. I just picked up one fabric, which was this, I would say this is like a burnt orange rib knit. I already have plans for this. Uh, there is a Vicky Sews dress that is made for knits and I think that it would look really really nice in this color so this has already been earmarked as soon as I saw this I thought uh, yeah this is the one um, I don't quite remember the prices of everything I bought so much and I've got so many receipts that I couldn't tell you I will tell you one thing there was not one expensive fabric in here. Everything here was ridiculously cheap. Picks up this rib fabric from Spotlight and then we headed into KL. So in Kuala Lumpur there is like a big textile street which has so many fabric stores. There was no way I was getting through that like in this one trip. I went back there almost every day and I did it like four or five different stores every single time I went. I didn't film all of it but just looking. There is so much out there. The next place that I went to is probably where I got the majority of my stuff. I got like six different items there. We went to a place called Jackal Mall. This place, think of a shopping mall. Think of a shopping mall with like nine floors, huge corner of a block, and then take out all the stores and just replace it with fabric because that is what Jackal Mall was. Now, unfortunately you couldn't film in there. I did do a little bit of a sneaky, and I tried my best, but like there were a lot of people there. One of the things I noticed as soon as you walk into any of these fabric stores is that someone approaches you straight away. And then not only do they approach you, but they will follow you throughout the store as you're browsing, even if you're not getting anything. Uh, I think this is for a couple of reasons. One, I believe everyone who works there is on a commission basis. So once they got you, then they're gonna be the one that follows you through the store. They'll take you to wherever you need. If you need anything and say, I want cotton, they'll take you to the cottons. I want this, they'll take you to that. And they'll cut it for you right there because there are no cutting tables anywhere. So there are tons of staff, someone will approach you, you can tell them what you're looking for, or you're just looking and they'll just walk around with you. And basically you'll have a friend that can just cut fabric for you on the fly. And if you have questions, they know the prices of everything, they know the composition, they know most things about all of the fabric. So it's quite handy but if you're not used to just being followed around a store that's something you should probably know about because I did a, I did a little bit of research and I found that out but I wasn't prepared for how much like 
having a little shadow. As soon as you touch something, they're like, oh, here you go. And then like rolling it out for you. And I was just like, okay, this is too much. But you get used to it after a while. And at that point, then like once I, once the person I was with realized that I was like doing some serious shopping, uh, I think he was quite happy because like at the end he said that I completely made his commission for the day so he can like relax now, which, you know, you're welcome. Um, but also I think you like... I started off like browsing, so I like to look at everything first. Um, so I think he just thought that I was just like not gonna buy anything. And then I was like, okay, I'd like three meters of this, please. I'd like three meters of that, please. I would like this. And uh, in the end, he was walking around with this giant pile of fabric. So I think we were both happy and I didn't have to carry anything, which was, which was great. So like, it's a win-win really. So let's get into it. So the first thing that I got from Jack Elmo was a just a super plain white shirting material. They had tons of different shirting materials out there, but I was looking at something that had like really good drape um, and that felt really nice on the skin. It's just like a standard white, so it doesn't really look like anything on camera, but I was very, very happy with it. So I got about three meters. So while I was looking around, they, I walked through this section that had a lot of uh, pleated crepes. Now you might remember that I picked up a chiffon crepe this summer in Barcelona and it was like 10 meters but it didn't look like that and it was really nice and beautiful and yellow. I haven't done anything with that yet, mostly because this isn't really the weather, this winter weather for that fabric but I, I will be making something for next summer. But I did go through a crepe section so I picked up this beautiful pleated green crepe. Now, I think it's absolutely beautiful. And if you look, it's like lovely pleated. It's got really good drape. I think this would be absolutely beautiful. And it's actually kind of sheer. So this has been folded a couple of times, but it is a fairly sheer crepe. I think that would make a beautiful skirt. And you know that saying, if I like it, then I'll just get it in another color. I did exactly that and got it in this beautiful orange. I'm obsessed. It is so beautiful. Please look at this color. Every time I touch it, I'm like, I'm really excited. It, it feels really nice, soft, uh, very slinky. And I actually got three and a half meters of this. There are two things that I really want to make with this. One of them is like a, you may have seen it online. It's a one shouldered uh, dress asymmetric dress that's been made with pleated fabric so the pleats kind of like cascade open absolutely beautiful and I've also seen like a two-piece like a big uh, flouncy top and these beautiful trousers made out of pleating I'm not sure which one I'm gonna do but I got the two colors so I could have a go at making both so might be a future video uh, where I try to attempt to make the pattern and see how it works but I'm very, very happy with those. After I saw those beautiful pleated fabric, which I had in every colorway in prints, they had these like ombre effect one. It was, it was amazing. We then moved into the more fancier fabrics. Now, I love glitter, I love beading, I love all of those beautiful fabrics that I have absolutely nowhere to go in them. I don't know why I have or try to buy them because where am I going? to the Met Gala. No one's inviting me to the Met Gala, but that's absolutely where you would find these fabrics. And they were so cheap that I had to buy some. So I did, and I'm not mad at it. So the first thing that I got is this beautiful green beaded fabric. So I'm gonna open it up. It's on a green, like a lace. And as you can see, it's got like this geometric, uh, pattern on it. Beautiful fabric would make a beautiful evening gown. I have, again, no reason to need a beautiful evening gown in this color, but I got it anyway. So this is quite sheer. So I also picked up the lining to go on top. It is a perfect match and they look absolutely beautiful together. And I was really, really happy with that choice. So I got it again in another color. I got it in black, not to make a floor length thing, but to make a, maybe a short 
corset type situation. I don't know. My mind was going crazy with all the possibilities. So I was just like, let me just get it. And we can like narrow down the possibilities when it comes to making the stuff. This is the black version. They had lots of different patterns, but this one was my favorite. Now, I have to be careful because some, if you handle it, it's very heavy. If you handle it ugh, too much, the beads become loose. But you can see the pattern a little bit more. I'll stand up. You can see that, like, depending on where you position it, you could have a really beautiful dress on your hands. So I also got uh, three and a half meters of this. Both of them are on a 60 uh, inch roll, so they're quite tall, which means I can definitely cut something beautiful. I also got the matching um, lining for that. So I'm very, very happy with those choices. Don't know what I'm going to make. It's gonna be great though. So when I do finally decide what it is I'm gonna do, I will make a video about it. I got one more thing from Jackel and this one I saw as I was walking out to pay and I saw it and I thought, hold up, hold up. Let me, let me just get this real quick. You know that I love a uh, tweed looking material. We found this green, which like we know that green is my favorite color, but this green is gorgeous. It's got like a silver fleck in it. And I just thought, the matching set that I will make with this will be epic. I don't know whether it's going to be like a skirt and a jacket. It's going to be a jacket and something. So it's going to be a jacket and skirt, a jacket and maybe shorts, a jacket and maybe a dress that goes underneath it. I have a few patterns that will work for this. It is gorgeous. Uh, so I got, um, I got three meters. So I feel like that's, that's enough to do what I'm thinking of doing possibly. If not, then I guess we're just gonna have to go back to Malaysia and get some more. Oh no. So that was everything that I got from Jackal Mall. I love that place. I went back like three or four different times. I was like, I'm not gonna buy anything. I'm just gonna look. Cause there's, there were, there were whole floors that I didn't even get to look at. Cause I was like, I don't have time to see everything. So when I had a moment and I was back in the area, I would just go inside and just have a look again. Okay, on to the next place. I went to a place called Gulatis, which you would have seen in the vlog was like this like nine floor extravaganza of a building. Inside there, they mostly do like silks, cottons like menswear quite luxurious fabrics but there was a section of like washable fabrics and like silky satins and that is where I picked up my next fabric I found that from store to store quite a few of like their main staple fabrics were actually the same lots of patterns lots of florals I feel like they really love florals out there I'm not really the most floral of people but you know maybe I caught the bug while I was out there because I bought back so many florals that I, I don't even know what happened. I just blacked out and then, then I woke up and I had all these florals in my hand. So, so yeah, while I was in Galatis, I picked up two fabrics, these ones. So the first one was this green border print. They have so many different kinds of border print. This is just like a, like a silky, uh, polyester I believe. I saw this and I thought what I really would like to make in with this is a dressing gown. I just recently finished a dressing gown that I made out of like waffle fabric so it's really cozy but I wanted a few slinky ones in like cute little prints for just like swanning around my house. So call me influence, but when I watch like makeup tutorials of like the girls on TikTok they're always wearing like really nice dressing gowns and I was just like I want a really nice dressing gown. And then I was like, uh, hello, you can make clothes. So I just got some fabric and now I'm gonna make some really nice dressing gowns. So um, this one is one that I really like because it's green, it's got flowers. I like the border print, which will be at the bottom and on the arm. And then I also really liked this one, which is just like this kind of like blush pink color, another border print with like this kind of lace type ending and these really nice white flowers. So we're gonna make ourselves a couple of cute uh, dressing gowns. If I do change my mind, it's likely to be pajamas. So either way, it's gonna be like lounge and sleepwear. And I'm very happy with that. 
on to the next shop, which is Harrison's. Harrison's was like at the end of this long textile street and it was kind of like on a corner. Uh, I think it had like three or four floors. There was a lot going on in there. And as you would see with all the other stores, there's lots of clothing at the front and then you have to either like move into the back or move upstairs to get to the fabric. So from there, I was pleasantly surprised. At this point, I'm just trying to find something different from what I'm seeing in all the stores. And I found, I found a few cute little things. I found this, so this and this crepe. These two crepes are quite lightweight, really nice and slinky. As you might have seen in the vlog, I am in the market for like I want to make a few like long kind of shirt dress situation with like ties. I have a vision of what I kind of want to be looking like this winter. I want to be wearing like long flowy shirt dresses with like my knee high boots that I'm going to be making uh, obviously with tights and stuff and like nice jackets but I don't have enough like floor length dresses. So this again another floral completely unlike me what is going on but again, in my green and orange colorway, because that seems to be the color of the trip. So this is like a green, dark green with like orange flowers, which I think would be actually really, really nice. I really like how it looks against my skin tone. So I picked up about three meters of this and then a much lighter one, which I also think is really, really nice. You might have seen, there was like four different colorways. I was, um, torn between this and the black version but this cream one won out in the end. I really really like the colors and I think it's really really pretty. These would also make really nice two-piece sets like with a, a long flowy trouser and a shirt um, so I was quite happy to maybe chop and change depending on when I actually get around to making it what I want to make. The final fabric that I have though this is a really beautiful silky jacquard viscose you can see how it just drapes. It's really, really drapey. It's quite a thin material, but I just couldn't get over how beautiful and shiny this pattern was. Again, orange and green. It seems to be everywhere at the moment. I absolutely love it. It is a very much in your face uh, fabric. This wouldn't be a shirt dress though. This I think would look absolutely amazing as a like a corset, maybe a shaped or a draped one with a draped skirt that kind of goes over the top of it. So that's the kind of look that I'm looking for. Something quite um, just like ornate vintage looking. I really, really like it. Uh, what I also really like about this fabric is that on the inside, the wrong side it's uh, also on the inverse so you can kind of do it both ways although this is the better way to do it absolutely gorgeous fabric so that was everything from Harrison's so at this point we're on like day two or day three maybe I headed over to another store I uh, mostly had clothing a buyer's tunics but there was one section where there was all these folded pieces of cut fabric. The cut fabric comes in four meters and there were loads of different prints and everything like that. Most of them were crepes, a couple of them were cottons. Uh, I picked up a really nice crepe and it had two versions. It had one version where it was just plain and then there was another version where it was the same but it had like rhinestones on it. I was gonna get the rhinestone one but it turns out that the bit that had the rhinestones was actually just the bit that was folded, the bit that you could see. Once you unfolded it, it was exactly the same as the other fabric and there was no rhinestones. It was just on the front bit. It's because it's made to be a long tunic or an abaya and that was the bit that would be right at the front. So that was like the main front bit, which is why the stones were just there. But it was very sneaky because like, if you didn't know, you would end up buying it all folded up thinking it had rhinestones all over but it was just at the front and you'd be paying extra just for like 50 rhinestones so so I just got the plain one which I'm also very happy with so if you see here it's just like kind of got like this geometric um, print on it this really nice like a uh, creamy nudish color with like a black and yellow would be a really nice shirt dress something that kind of drapes really well would also work as a nice matching set or a two-piece so either way I'm quite happy with being able to use it for both so I'm like I'm really really happy with that and I believe I think this is one of the prices I do I think it was like 70 ringgits for 
all four meters together as cut as one piece, uh, which works out to like four or five pounds. So I was quite, I was quite happy with that. There were loads of different ones, but at this point my suitcase was getting pretty full. So we just got the one. Next up is Nagoya fabrics, which I completely embarrassed myself in. I went in there um, right after um, going to the botanical gardens with Sam. I didn't have my purse with me or anything like that. I was just like there for vibes. Sam was paying for everything and we were having a good time. And then he went back to the hotel and instead of going back to the hotel and grabbing my purse, which had all of my money in, for the most part, all of the places in uh, Malaysia, I've been able to use contactless on pretty much everything. So I didn't think it was gonna be a problem. The one store that I walk into, Nagoya, I get some fabric, I'm there at the till, the lady's like, can I have your card please? And I'm just like, oh, I get out my phone. She's like, no contactless. And then I can't find my card. It was very embarrassing. And I had to like promise the lady, I'm coming back. I promise, I'm not, I'm not trying to stiff you. I'm coming back. And then I had to get the 20 minute taxi ride back to the hotel and then come back. But like, it was still waiting for me and she was just like, okay, so, but it was so embarrassing. So don't be like me, bring your cards for that one place that like doesn't like use contactless. But other than that, it's a pretty tech savvy city. So like, if you just have contactless, you'll mostly be okay. But like, you know, just bring, bring a card just in case. So yeah, after after that embarrassment, I picked up these two fabrics from the Goya. They had, again, a huge selection, loads of different floors, but I was looking for something different that I hadn't seen in any other stores. So these fabrics are Swiss dot fabrics. Uh, I think you can get Swiss dot in different kinds of fabrics. You can get like a Swiss dot viscose, you can get a Swiss dot chiffon. I think this is a Swiss dot it feels like a Swiss dot viscose. It's got that same kind of drape. There are not many Swiss dots that have prints on them, at least not in the UK that I have seen. So um, seeing these ones that are really nice and printed, I really liked it. And again, it's floral. What's going on? I don't know. I really liked this beige color with the orange flowers, really, really liked it. So still don't know what I'm going to make out of this. This is the sort of thing that could absolutely be loungewear at home, could be a shirt dress, could be pajamas, could be a dressing gown, could be multiple things. So I made sure I had enough to be able to change my mind whenever I want. And I got this one. And then I also saw this orange one, still a Swiss dot as you can see, but beautiful black cream and orange flowers. I just really, really like it. Definitely thought this could definitely be a dressing gown, but this would also make a really dramatic, like floor length dress, maybe something with like a ruffle. I don't know. And I have so many patterns that call for dresses that go all the way down to the floor. And I've never been making them because I'm like only five, six. So I tend to wear things that are like above my knee. I'm trying to wear more longer things because I actually really like the look. I just didn't like the look on me. So I'm just trying to like make it easy on myself. So I think wherever this is, the bigger, the more fabric you have, the more extravagant you can be just wafting around in orange. And I'm trying to like, you know, make myself feel happy with all these nice bright colors. I'm very happy with it. When I went to buy that, it looks like it was quite a popular one because I asked for three meters and it was the end of the roll. So I finished the roll. I don't know if they'll have any more. So if you're in Malaysia and you're looking for it, I'm sorry. Those are the two fabrics that I got from Nagoya Fabrics. And then I went over to the final fabric place, which was Geo's Fabric. Geo's Fabric had three floors. They have a website and they have like some sort of membership. There were They had two different prices. They had uh, non-member prices and then member prices. The member prices were like 50% of the uh, non-member prices. So when I asked, how do you become a member? All it was was like 10 ringgits. Uh, a year to have membership prices. So I paid an extra 10 ringgits and got 50% off all of my fabric. The first thing I got was this really nice printed viscose. You know that I'm a big fan of a nice drapey printed viscose. It really works well for a whole manner of different types of clothing. This is super soft and I really, really like the print. Feels very much like a zebra print, but not quite, uh, still kind of abstract. And I like that it is black and cream and not black and white. It feels a little bit softer and less like stark in your face. So this would make a beautiful dress. Also great 
two piece absolutely. I think I got four meters of this and they're all on like 60 inch rolls. So the next one I got was another viscose. This one is a little bit thicker and this one has a slight stretch to it. I really like a good abstract watercolor type print and this one was really really nice. I liked the colorways. It actually came in another colorway that was like greens, yellows and reds but I think I actually preferred this one so I got three meters of this. I also picked up this really really nice silk satin fabric feels so silky and soft in my hands and so nice on my skin. This will be a beautiful dress. Still have nowhere to wear it. I'm serious about being friends, guys. If you guys want to start inviting me to like events where I can use fabrics like this and make really nice dresses, please hit me up because I'm ready. I am ready. Uh, so I picked up um, three and a half meters of this. It's again, quite an abstract print, as you can see. Uh, we've got like brown with white, uh, navy and pink. This is the sort of thing that would make a really beautiful like column style cal front dress. I've seen a few dresses of that type that I have considered making for myself and I think I've got two weddings to go to next year in the summer so maybe that might be one of the wedding guest dresses that I make. So lastly is this fabric which is basically a sheer uh, chiffon fabric. As you can see it is quite sheer but you can also see that it's got like this really fluffy texture. So as you can see close up it's like really really sheer but it's got like this really nice fluffy texture absolutely loved this I saw this in a different like kind of um, uh, style in a white and a pink but I thought this black one would actually be the most versatile for me this is the sort of thing that would again be like evening party wear it would make a really cool shirt or part of a shirt maybe the sleeves or like the front placket but it would also be a really really amazing skirt of a dress. So imagine like a bustier dress uh, with like straps maybe in leather and then you've got like this really cool fluffy skirt. Kind of looks like feathers but not quite. That's kind of what I was thinking with this. So I picked up two meters Still not quite sure what I'm gonna do with it, but I do have some other fabrics that I can pair this with to make a really, really nice outfit. So you'll also see in the vlog that I went to a place called uh, Bunga Ruben, and in there they had all sorts of like haberdashery items, and in there they had loads, and when I say loads, I mean tons of bias binding in pretty much every color. So I picked up a whole bunch because they were super cheap, and I've got them in here. We've got like some yellow, we've got green, we've got orange, because some of the things that I'm gonna be making, I might need to bind the inside if I'm not going to line them. They also have like this really nice gold, so I picked up some gold. So I basically picked up a couple of colors that I didn't already have, basically to match some fabrics that I currently have and plan on using over the next couple of months. And that was everything that I picked up in Kuala Lumpur. So hopefully that wasn't too long of a video, you guys. I hope you enjoyed everything. I cannot wait to get stuck into this pile. Overall, I would highly recommend going to Malaysia. Amazing country. Everybody is so friendly there. And the food, the food is amazing. We went to this beautiful Michelin star restaurant out there called Dawakan. Our table was amazing. We had a beautiful view of the Petronas Towers and the food was fantastic. So if you're into like fine dining, I would definitely say go to Dawakan. And I can't say any more good things about Malaysia. I had a great time there and I would absolutely go back to do more fabric shopping and eating. So um, if you haven't put that on your list of places to go to look for fabric, you should definitely add it. So that's it. That's the end of the video. Thank you for watching to the very end. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button. Let me know what you think in the comments. Which fabric was your favorite? Have you been to Malaysia before? What did I miss? Are there any stores I missed? Because I'm absolutely going to put it on my list if there is for a next visit. And if you haven't already, then subscribe and make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I post another video. And I will see you in the next one.